In this video, we are diving back into Pico CTF 2022, and let's not waste any time, let's get after it. So hey, I'm over here on my Kali Linux virtual machine. I have a text editor open up, as well as a Kali Linux command line, but I'm gonna move into this reverse engineering category for this fresh Java challenge. Looks like the description here is pretty simple. Hey, can you get the flag, reverse engineer this Java program? And I'll go ahead and grab the link here so we could move into our terminal, move into the reverse engineering category, make a directory for fresh Java, hop over there, and let's w get this file down. All right, so we have a keygenme.class. If I try to open that up, it is a compiled Java class, which is something that we won't readily be able to see the source code out of. Like, this is just Sublime Text trying to show me all of the bytes, hexadecimal representation of the data. So we'll probably have to try and, hey, uncompile that or get the byte code out of it and be able to do something that'll actually show us the source code. Normally you could do this with something like Jadix, I believe. Um, Jadix is something that you may very well have to install. Uh, there are others, JD GUI, there are others like a Java decompiler. Um, there's plenty of stuff you could find online to do this just as well. But I think if Jadix is exactly what I'm thinking of, uh, let me check it out. Uh, let's give me a help info. It will, yeah. Okay, dex to Java decompiler, you could give it a class file and it should hopefully be able to carve this thing out. Let's use Jadix and it does need an input file, of course. It needs this keygenme.class, but it needs to know, okay, given the current directory, I'm gonna assume. File not found, I don't quite follow. Do I need to like tack D decode it? Uh, yeah, output directory, no decompile a single class. Can I just give you the current directory path to it? Is, is it not liking that? Let's use Jadix tech tech single class and refer to keygenme.class. I, I did specify the input file. I did, I did. What? <laughs> I'm confused. No, oh, oh, okay. So Jadix tech D out, that's an example. Is that what I need to give it? Tech D output and then the class file? Why does it need it to be in strictly Jadix bin? That's stupid. It can't use like a specific path. What if I give you a absolute path of, let's use real path and some command substitution so I don't have to figure that out. Real path will take the, there we go. Okay, real path will take a given relative path and then give you the full absolute path, which is kind of nice and convenient if you don't want to have to type out this whole silly, stupid thing. Uh, and we use the command substitution with the dollar sign parentheses surrounding our command. With that, it probably put output all the way in user bin just as well. Uh, so let's actually... Let's use our present working directory slash output as our directory. And will that create that? No, what the heck? Can you put the output in the current directory, please? Am I stupid? Tech tech single class? I just did. I don't get this. Does it need to be a, a dex file? No. Why is it not telling me anything? What if I'm had verbose mode on? Attack V, uh, broke a lot of stuff. Okay, that's not, that's not having it. That's just not doing it. Can I use JD GUI? Let's see if I can install that one. JD GUI is a good one to be able to decompile this sort of stuff and does give you a graphical user interface. So <laughs> while I was fumbling around, sure, whatever, Kelly, do whatever you gotta do. Uh, 
There we go. We'll kick up some coffee window here and let's open this class file in the current directory. There we go. This is much, much better. This actually shows us the code that we wanted to see. Can I actually change the file size on this, please? Can I zoom in at all? Does it, does it let me modify this? Preferences. Here we go. Uh, font size. Yeah, let's amp that up to like 20 so you can see that a little bit better. Sweet. Okay, so we have a scanner, which is our input, right, for Java languages. Public class keygenme, public static void, given the parameters. We enter a key. We check the next line, and if that length is not equal to 34, then it is bad. Looks like it's kind of building out the flag backwards, checking the character at index over and over and over again, but it's upside down. So let's copy all this out, and I'm gonna just hit Control C to copy it out. Uh, let's go ahead, and in this current directory, I just opened another terminal, I'm gonna subble a rev flag dot text. So I have this scratch pad for me to work in. What I want to do is I want to remove all these lines and find only the characters that are in a single set of quotation marks. So I'll actually capture these with regular expressions, right? Again, just parentheses. Let me hit find all. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna hit find all and then hit control X. So I've cut them all and I can remove everything else here on this uh, file here. So now I only have these single quotes and the letters at least reversed or upside down. Uh, what I could do then is replace and remove all of these single quotes. And then I wonder if Sublime Text can just reverse these lines. Yeah, you could use permute, uh, per permute lines to reverse them. That's pretty nice. Now we have Pico CTF done just like that. If you wanted to uh, not do that, if you just wanted to actually cat it out after it's saved on your command line, you could then use something like the tack command to reverse the line order, and that will spit it out for you. Then you could use tr tack d and cut that uh, and remove the new line characters to delete any of the specific files earlier. Uh, pretty good pretty easy that's done for us right we might very well have been able to do that from the original source code like hey if i copy this whole thing um and we said keygen me dot java what if in the original code i just took a grep tack oe of single quote single quote uh any character inside of the keygenme java source code that will retrieve all of these just as well we could tr tack d to remove the single quotes again use tack to reverse those lines and then pipe that to tr tack d to remove the new lines in which case that will use some bash java <laughs> scripting and cutting up and slicing and dicing to carve out the Pico CTF flag for us. So that's one quick and easy, cool way to do that. Uh, really, I did need to rely on JD GUI, and I was fumbling around with uh, JADX for a bit first, but whatever. JD GUI worked just fine for us. Um, I wonder if JD GUI actually has some command line arguments you could use, or no, it, it, it is going to be a, a GUI, right? Makes sense. So anyway, let's run that same command. Let's go ahead and save that so we have the flag and our get flag script, and we can call that challenge done. Hit finish, and I'll go ahead and go submit this for an extra 200 points. Dunzo. Good stuff. That was a, a nice one. Cool to uh, brush the dust off of using a Java decompiler uh, and grabbing some tooling so you weren't relying on an online resource to go grab that out on the internet. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Maybe you got some new tooling in there and learned some new tricks. Um, if you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things, you know, like, comment, subscribe, everything that helps the channel grow, brings these videos to more people. I'm trying to get that education out there. Uh, it's all available. Hey, it's all for free. It's all for fun. And I hope you enjoy. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next video.